Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to dynamically change a combo box's sort. So you can sort by first name, last name, or last name, first name, just by clicking on a little label there. See it? Click on a little FL or LF, right? Or however you want to handle it. Now, I am going to mark this as a developer level tip because you're going to need two lines of code, just two. That's it. Two lines of source code. But you got to know where to put it. And that's what I'm going to show you. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, don't panic. It's not hard. Go watch this first. It's my intro to VBA video. It's free. It's on my website and my YouTube channel. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know. Also, you need to know a little bit of SQL as it pertains to access. Just a little bit. So go watch this video first so you know what a select statement is and an order by. All right, go watch that. It's not scary. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And if you have not watched my invoicing video where I make this guy, right, the order form, and we have this drop down combo box right here, okay? This is what we're going to be changing. You might want to sort this last name, first name, or first name, last name, depending on your whim of that day, right? And this is a simple example, but you could do it with any kind of combo box you want. Some people, you got to, you know, you got a, a product combo box that's got part number and serial number and unit number, all kinds of different numbers. You might want to sort it differently depending on what you're trying to find. All right, so normally what we did when we designed this guy, we used the combo box wizard. All right, and if you open up the properties for that combo box and go to data, you're going to see a row source right there. All right, I'm going to zoom in, Shift F2. All right, this row source gets the stuff that goes in the box. Now, since the stuff is only coming from one thing, that customer last name, first name, Q, all right, I can get rid of some of this stuff. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of the brackets because we, we don't have any spaces or, or stuff in our, in our names. So we can get rid of all that and clean this up a little bit. Okay, all right. So that in its simplest form is what this SQL statement is. It says select, go get me, the customer ID and LF, which is the last name, first name that we put together from that query and then order by LF. Okay, so here's my customer LFQ, it's right here. That's all that does. And that query puts together first name and last name in that order like that, see, right? Okay. Now, what we can do is we can totally ignore this query and write that SQL statement ourselves in a little event, okay? So we need different ways to fire this event off. So we, so the user does something, click something, double click something, whatever you want to do. You can make a button. You can make, uh, I don't know. I like to use little labels. So I'm just going to make some room here. And I'm going to put two little labels right here for last name and first name. I just copy this label. Copy, paste. And oh, it, see, it hides behind the, the subform here. That's one of the, the quirks and accesses. Things will hide behind subforms. We'll change this to LF. And we'll make that a little smaller. And we'll copy that and paste it again. And we'll make this guy FL. Oop, get down there. FL. Okay. And I like to color these guys blue. Just kind of tells the user, hey, something, you know, you could click on this and something happens, right? Okay, let's give them good names. I'm going to slide this over here. Let's give these guys good names, right? We don't want them called label 14. Never leave your stuff called label 14, right? This will be the LF, excuse me, LF <laughs> label. And this one will be the, guess what? FL label. Okay, now we're ready to add events to these guys. So click on the first one. We're going to go to events, all right? Basically for a label, you got on click and on double click. All right, so we're gonna use on click, dot, dot, dot. Then open up this guy, right? My VB code editor. We're gonna come right in here and say customer combo. That's the name of my combo box, dot row source. Combo boxes and list boxes. This will work the same way for a list box, by the way. You do the same thing. Combo box, uh, dot row source, equals now in here you can put a table you could put just customer t right you could put a query if you want to but we're going to put select customer id that's our hidden column right that's the bound column that's where we get our id for the value to save in the table right so select customer id comma 
Now we got to put in here, this is last name, first name. So we're going to stick together last name and first name. So last name, and we want the comma, right? Last name, comma, space, and first name. Okay, so there's our second field. All right, select customer ID, and then last name, comma, first name. From customer T, order by, and then what do you want for your sort? I'm going to turn this thing off. We don't need that. Right, order by last name, comma, first name. Enter. Now, something wrong with that command. What's wrong with that? Oh, someone just beamed in. Well, since these double quotes are inside of a string, these have to be double, double quotes. Right? And if you don't know all about that, go watch my double, double quote video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Right, we want this to literally be last name and quote, comma, quote, and first name. Okay, now let's do the other one. So come back out here. We're gonna click on the first name, last name label, on click, dot, dot, dot. Okay, right up here, these are alphabetical. That's why it goes FL and then I and then LF. All right, same thing. In fact, we can copy that. Well, now let's just retype it. Customer combo dot row source equals select. Customer ID is always gotta be first, comma, first name, and a space and last name. All right, we don't want a comma there. It's just Richard Ross, James Kirk, whereas the other one's gonna be Kirk comma James. See that? From customer T, order by first name comma last name. All right, and again, if I press enter, you'll see that that's invalid because these need to be double, double quotes. In fact, a lot of the times, lots of people have problems with that double, double quote thing. In fact, I got two different videos on problems with double double quotes um i often just write the string out like i just did and then i go back in and find the spots where i got to make double double quotes okay all right but now we're ready to test so let's save it give it a quick debug compile just make sure everything's good okay let's come back out here close this close this open it back up again all right let's drop the box down now we're last name comma first name all right so let's click on the fl button click all right, nothing appears to happen, but let's drop the box down. Ooh, look at that. The records have changed. It's now first name, last name in there. Now, why is this one still that? Well, it doesn't actually change what's in the box. To do that, we'll have to requery the box, but you'll see in just a second. Let's click on this one now, LF, click, and now it goes back to last name, first name. Ooh, look at that. So it's working. We just now have to update this guy, and that's why I said it's going to be two lines of code. Because here we need a little customer combo, oops, customer combo dot requery. And that I will copy and paste. We'll put that one right down here too. Pink. And if you want, you could drop the box down too, but now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Just what? Last name, first name, click. First name, last name, click. See, it changes in the box now this time too. See, click, click. And now you can drop this down. And it's handy because now if you want to search for Tom, it brings you right to the Toms. Or if you know his last name, you can click on last name first and type in Paris and it brings you right to the Parises. See, that's why it's handy to sometimes be able to change that. And if you don't want these little buttons here, you can put them down the bottom somewhere, change customer sort or whatever you want to do. You can make a right click menu and say change sort that way. The sky's the limit with, with access. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. So this method, like I said, it works with combo boxes and list boxes. I've got another video that shows you how to do it with a continuous form. All right, here's that video. Click the sort. I'll put links to all this stuff down below, by the way. Uh, this we can click on the column header, which is just a label again. All right, instead of changing the row source, though, we're changing the record source. It's different for forms. It's called a record source. I've also got a search and sort template that covers that, plus it changes the colors of these. You can type in search parameters above that in these little boxes here. All kinds of stuff in that one. I've got my big long search seminar, which covers all that stuff plus a ton more. If you want to learn about searching, sorting, all that stuff, I'm your guy. I got hours and hours and hours and hours of training on how to do this kind of stuff. And if you want to learn VBA programming with access in general, well, I got, I don't know, hundreds of hours of developer training. I got so much, I, don't, I can't even keep track of it anymore. I think I'm up to like developer 42 or 43, somewhere up there. There's lots of them. 
But there you go. There is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy learning with me. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to learn more, there's lots more on my website. So I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.